Hey, chemistry, a very sick Mrs. KJ here. Sorry about it. It's the best I can do. I've lost my voice the last few days, and I finally have to get this video out this morning, and this is the best my voice will do. This is lesson 2.06, Bohr Diagrams. You will need your periodic table, your notebook for notes and drawings, a pen, and if you like things colorful, grab some colored pencils or markers. Um, today would be a good time to do some color coding. But of course, if you just want to make your notes like usual with a pen or pencil, that is perfectly fine. In your notes, first of all, write Bohr diagrams, the most common way to show an atom. Technically wrong, but still really helpful to learn and understand chemistry. So write down that whole slide in your notes. I will say up until probably the middle or end of my first year as a chemistry major, I still used Bohr diagrams. They're very, very helpful. So don't think, oh, well, they're wrong. Why is she bothering to teach them to us? Because even though they're technically wrong, they really make so much of the basics of chemistry easier to understand. And they're close enough to write that it works. And at the end, I'll sh at the end of this unit, I'll show you what they're actually supposed to look like. And you'll see how, oh, look, we got to the same results, just with a much easier diagram to use. Make sure you add all of this to your notes, so maybe hit pause, write this all down. The nucleus is in the center, so Bohr diagram rules. And what are Bohr diagrams for? For drawing atoms. So the nucleus is in the center, just like it really is. Orbitals must be filled in order. An orbital must be completely full before drawing a new orbital. The first orbital, or ring, holds a maximum of two electrons. These should be at 12 o'clock. So in other words, we draw one at the top and one at the bottom at 6 o'clock. All other orbitals hold a maximum of eight electrons. In order, the first four go at 12, the next one goes at 3 o'clock, the next one goes down here at the 6 o'clock position, like you were drawing a clock, and the last one at the 9 o'clock. That's four of them. Just like in real life, if you went onto a bus and you didn't know anybody, would you go sit right next to a person who you didn't know when there were lots of empty seats? No, people naturally spread out. It's just kind of one of the rules of nature. Same thing with electrons, but electrons have a reason. Are electrons positive, negative, or neutral? They are negative, and so what do two negatives do? Do they attract or repel? They repel. They want to be far away from each other. So they, that's another reason why they spread out. Then what happens is they pair up. You can think of it like there's nowhere left to sit on the bus, so you have to sit by somebody. The other thing is one of them actually flips its spin. So it kind of like spins backwards, and that's how in reality they're able to be next to each other, even though they're both negative. So then they pair up. All right, and we'll be doing a bunch of examples. So here's the periodic table. For most of chemistry, especially at the beginning, we're going to be for focusing on the first group or column, the second group or column, and then we skip this messy middle, and they're called transition metals. We skip this, and at the bottom, they actually belong right here. It's a mess. We just ignore them for a few weeks. So we go group one, group two, and then even the chemists say, eh, let's just skip these when we name it. This is going to be group three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's what we're going to focus on for the first few weeks, and especially with Bohr diagrams. So what I did on my paper is I put a little line in between to remind ourselves that, oh, yeah, there's the messy middle transition metals that go in the middle that we can ignore. And we're just going to be focusing on these eight groups. Now, write this in your notes, a group or column, go up and down on a periodic table. This you don't have to write down, this is what I want you to do. Turn your paper sideways. Okay, I want you to get a new piece of paper, turn it sideways, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw a board diagram for each one of these 20 elements. And if you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's going to take all day. No, it starts to get really fast once you get the hang of it. So, we are going to, when you draw this too, make sure that in the first row, rows go across, only hydrogen and helium, because really, look, that's what happens, and there's a reason for that. I'll explain that in a few minutes. And this is my next row, which will have eight boxes, my next row eight, and then when we get to the fourth row, we're only going to draw the first two. 
And again, there's reasons for that, but that's what we're going to do today, the first 20. Now, when you draw these boxes, do not write everything in them. No, just draw empty boxes. Or even if you don't want to draw boxes, we're just going to draw these diagrams um, along the way. Personally, I would suggest making some boxes so you can kind of map out your paper. Make them as big as possible. This should take up the whole paper because once we draw down here, your drawing is going to get pretty big. So we want to make sure this fits on one piece of paper. Um, so just empty boxes, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, 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 three. Um, a total of four rows, and then you can even number them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because those are the group or column numbers. All right. So again, hit pause if you don't have that done and just draw the empty boxes. All right, so I included the rules. All this is from the previous slide. I got our clock to refer to. I have our periodic table. What we are going to do right now is we are going to fill in this first box where hydrogen is. Okay, so that's where you're going to do your drawing. And let's look at hydrogen. Hydrogen is number one. What does the atomic number, the atoms number, number one tell us? It tells us that there is one proton. And what's the mass number of hydrogen rounded to the nearest whole number? It is also one. So how many neutrons are there in one atom of hydrogen? Well, each proton weighs one, each neutron weighs one, but the total mass is one. And we have to have a proton. So the only thing in the nucleus is one proton. So that's what you're going to write in the center of this box right here. You're going to write one P plus. Why the plus? because protons have a positive charge. Next, you're going to draw a little circle around it. Now, this one probably isn't going to fill up your whole box. That's okay. It might fill up like the middle half of your box. And we have our one proton, and so we start out with electronically neutral. That means the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So how many electrons does one atom of hydrogen start with? Just one. And let's look at the rules. The first orbital holds a maximum of two electrons. So I drew an orbital or circle. These should be at 12 o'clock. Okay, so my first one goes right up on top. And that's it. This is a Bohr diagram of hydrogen. That's all. We're done. Not too bad, huh? Okay, so now let's do the next element. What element is next on the periodic table? After number one in group one, we go way over here to number two, helium, in group eight. And yep, there's a reason it's way over there. All right, so let's go ahead and start our drawing for helium. Let's see if it's going to let me here. <laughs> there we go. All right, if we look at helium, how many protons are there in helium? Helium has an atomic number of two, so there are two protons. So that's what we write in the middle. And right now, we are drawing it way over here in this box. Okay, that's where we're drawing hydrogen. So we're drawing it over there. And we have two protons. How many neutrons? Well, let's look at the mass number. You might need to look at your copy if this is too tiny on your screen. What's the mass number? Four. So my mass number is 4. I have two protons. So 4 minus 2 equals what? 2 what? It equals 2. And so I have two neutrons. And neutrons have a charge of nothing. So there's a 0 after it. And that 0 we usually write as a superscript. And so what I mean by a superscript, as you can see it, I wrote it real tiny and up there. So that is a nucleus of what element? We're drawing helium. All right, so let's put our first orbital around helium. And how many electrons does helium have? Well, there's two protons. It's going to be neutral, so there's going to be two electrons. Where does my first electron go? My first electron, no matter what element it is, it always goes at 12 o'clock in the first orbital. Where does my second electron go? My second one always goes at 6 o'clock. And there we go. So I have two 
electrons. What can you tell me about this orbital? This orbital is full. And because it's a full orbital, that's actually why they put number two over here. All of these in this group are going to have full orbitals. So we have a full orbital. Woohoo! That's helium. We're done. All right, let's go ahead to the next slide. So now we're going to do element number three, which is what? Lithium. So we are actually doing this box right now. And let's take a look at lithium. So I'm going to kind of move everything out of the way so we can start over. And how many protons does lithium have? Three. I know that because it's the atomic number. What's the mass number rounded to the nearest whole number? It's seven. So seven minus three equals how many neutrons? We're going to have four. Four neutrons. So that is my nucleus, my center of lithium. And again, you're drawing it right here where lithium goes. Because we're going to see a bunch of patterns, so it'll be nice to have everything lined up nicely on your paper. Draw our first orbital. Where does the first electron go? 12 o'clock. Where does my next electron go? 6 o'clock. But wait, how many total electrons do I need? I need three, so where does this third one go? I filled up my first orbital, I have to draw another orbital. Okay, so let's draw another orbital. And there we go. I'll just kind of draw it around so it's all pretty. And this orbital, obviously a little bigger. And this one in order. So here's where my electrons go. The first four go at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. Okay. So this one's going to go at 12 o'clock. There you go. That is the Bohr diagram for lithium. All right. Now, I do want you to do the rest of these. It's very good practice. And not only is it practice, but you need to understand Bohr diagrams of the first 20 elements. It's going to make the next couple months easier in chemistry if you understand this. So it's worth the time to do it. I'm going to show you potassium next. So I'm going to skip down and show you potassium just so you can see what one of the bigger ones look like so you have an idea. Okay, so let's do potassium. So you're drawing it way down here in the corner. How many protons does it have? 19. What is the mass number? 39. All right, so we have 39 minus 19 equals what? 20 neutrons. And we'll draw our first orbital. And how many electrons go in the first one? Two. So one, two. It is now full. Draw your next orbital. All right. Now, how many total electrons do we have? We have 19 total electrons. So let's start drawing them. We have one, two, already done. So filling up the next orbital. We go one on the top. One at 3 o'clock, one at 9 o'clock, one at 6 o'clock. Remember, they want to spread out. Now, sometimes when you Google, you'll see the electrons all over, but that makes it so much harder to count, and you don't see the patterns as nicely. So I always pair them up, and actually that's what they do, so it's better. So, all right, we have a total of five in our second orbital. Five, six, keep pairing them up around the clock. Seven, eight. So I have two in my first one, which here's another chance if you like to color code. You can make the electrons in each orbital a different color. That will also help you see the patterns a lot better. So I'm going to start using different colors. Again, if you want to do it all in pen or pencil, that's fine. It's up to you. All right, so my second orbital is full because only eight fit in it, so i got to start another orbital. All right, let's start filling it in. One, two three, four. Again, I go around the clock and then I can start pairing them up. Again, around the clock again. It's that same pattern all the time. And there we go. It's full. So I have two in the first one plus eight in the second orbital makes 10 plus eight more makes 18. So I need one more electron. So what do I have to draw first? Another orbital. 
So I have my fourth orbital, and it's in row four. Uh, that's one of the patterns. I move my last electron up there, and that is it.